This video is to show you how to cut, lay and glue your vinyl flooring. The techniques are very similar if you're fitting rubber. Before you begin, prepare your subflooring and acclimatise your flooring by following our online instructions. Step 1. Rough cutting. Once you've got your room ready and you've got your vinyl, I normally take a measurement of the actual room and then add 10 centimetres to the overall length and then cut that off in a separate room if possible. I'll position that into the actual room and lap it up five centimetres either end of the walls so they're just lapped up so you can cut them in once you've glued out the floor. Relief cuts are small cuts made at right angles to the floor at corners and alcoves to relieve tension and allow the material to lie flat on the floor. Here we've got the point that needs to be cut just to make it easier and give a bit of release on the actual vinyl because otherwise it could tear or it could go uneven. So we just cut it down a little bit and then we cut the point to make it easier to fold down either side of the actual walls. So this is my point here. I'm just gonna cut through just to the actual point, just there. And then now I've made a relief cut, so this bit's free and this bit's free. Lay out the flooring to cover the entire room. If the room requires more than one strip, they should overlap each other by five centimetres. Once your flooring is laid out, fold half of each strip back on itself. The idea is to glue half the room, place the flooring, and then turn round and do the other half. Step two, gluing. For smaller rooms without any seams, it's possible to lay your floor without fully adhering. Use exactly the same fitting technique, but instead of fully gluing, just use a high quality vinyl spray adhesive at the doorways and edges. So once your floor is ready to go, obviously you've pulled back half the vinyl, so now you can start gluing out. I use an A2 trowel, because it doesn't leave any glue trowel lines underneath. Use the approved glue available on the Colour Flooring website. This is a water-based product, an acrylic glue. Always carefully read the instructions on the tub before you begin. When you're gluing that, you'd like to try and do it as a, as a big, smooth sweep, so you're spreading it evenly over the whole floor, and you just keep working it back, working it back to yourself. Just working myself out so I can get to the next run. You need to get as close to the edge as possible when you're gluing it out. Just work it into the edge as close as you can do. Obviously, the tighter you get it to the edge, the easier the vinyl is going to take to the, to the actual corners so you haven't got any bits that are trying to lift up. If you do get some on the skirting, obviously just give it a wipe straight away while it's still wet. When it comes to meeting up with the old glue, now this side's already been glued out previously. So now we've pulled back the vinyl. Now just carefully go up to the existing glue. But just make sure that you can see the glue that you're going up to so you don't get any dry spots. And what we tend to do, just to stop any sort of ridges or anything like that, is once we've glued out the whole section, we just lay in ever so slightly by about an inch or so, just so it's in the wet glue, but don't go too much further than an inch to stop any ridges forming. The common problem that people end up doing is thinking that glue's dry enough and then just putting the vinyl straight into the glue. You've got to wait till it's dry. You really need to wait until you can touch it and it doesn't transfer onto your hands. In a, in a minute, once it's dried enough, I'll show you how you should be able to feel when it's ready to go. Okay, so when it comes to the glue and that, there is no set time. We've, we've worked in places where the temperature's been so hot that it's gone off within 10 minutes of us gluing it out. And then we've worked in other places where we've been working in the cellar where it's taken an hour and a half to go off. 
So what you need to look out for is the colour change. It should go near on see-through. If you look down at this section here, this is probably going to be ready in about five minutes or so. But if you touch it, you can see that it's hardly leaving any sort of glue on the back of my hand. So that's a good way to, to tell if it's ready to go. It will grab, but you just need to wait just that little bit longer because it's still slightly transferring onto the fingers. So give it about another five minutes and then it'll be ready to go. Now we've glued it out, we've waited around for a little while. Now you can see the colour difference, when, maybe it might not show up on here, but when you're training it out it's a lot yellower and now it's gone a lot more see-through. Now I can touch that and nothing's coming off of my hand. Now you've probably got a window of when it's like this, around about 20 minutes. So basically just make sure you're sweeping off any of the bits at the back of the vinyl that you can see to begin with. Obviously the bit that's folded back will fold back in a minute and sweep that. So just give it a good sweep and sweep it away from the other bits of vinyl that you're going to be doing. You don't want to be sweeping it over to the same, to another bit of vinyl that you're going to be sweeping again. What I tend to do is just get some air underneath it just to make it easier to slide. And once I've got to about there, I will just come up here, because it's been folded back on itself, sometimes it can cool a little crease. So I just push that in through the back, just to push that first bit in, and the rest of it should slide. We don't roller it, just for the simple reason, because the glue's gone off as much as it has, it'll grab instantly. So we just use a broom. You don't really need a roller. As you can see, I've already cut some points. That just makes it easier to lay flat when you're sliding it back in. What I tend to do now is just give it a little sweep, trying to push and put in some pressure down on the actual vinyl so it makes sure it bonds to the actual glue. You just give it a good hard push and see this bubble that's just here will start to disappear and being pushed out to the edge. Just keep going over until you've completely got it out. Normally it's not normally a problem, but just in case you do get any, just keep working it out to the edges and you should have a nice smooth floor once you're done. Now when you're coming to this edge, try and angle the broom at a slight angle so you're sweeping into the actual vinyl because you don't want to be sweeping anything into the glue because obviously that's going to cause problems and cause little bumps underneath the actual vinyl. Once you've got it in position, you're ready to start fitting. But obviously we've got a big open area here, so we need to get all of these in position before we start cutting it in. But once you've got your normal, just a one sheet, if you've got one sheet or two sheets, you get them both in position and then you're ready to cut in. As soon as you're ready, start cutting. Obviously, if you see any, any areas like this, I don't know if you can see it, but it's slightly raised. All that is, it just needs pushing down. And once it's pushed down, it'll grab instantly. Step three, cutting to fit. Now we're ready to actually cut. The floor's been glued out and it's ready to go. Now the bit that's lapped up the wall, I always like to trim it down once I've got it in position and it's been glued out. I'll trim it down a little bit more just to make it easier for yourself to actually cut. So I'm just cutting the excess off. Now when you're cutting in, you want to put as much pressure as possible onto the actual blade, pushing it down, so you push the vinyl down at the same time, and it should give you a nice clean edge against the skirting. Okay, so when it comes to cutting in your actual vinyl, you need to get the angle of your blade just right to make it a nice clean cut. Yeah, um, it's a lot easier, believe it or not, to do it by hand than it is to do it any other way by measuring and then cutting, measuring and cutting. Um, the technique that you really want to do is you want to put as much pressure on the blade, pushing it right to the floor where the actual skirting meets the floor. So you're pushing it right into that corner and then just gently drag it along. It will take a lot of pressure, um, but it's the best way to do it.
this is the position that you'd like to get your blade in. My knuckle is fully pressed to the floor and my thumb is up against the other bit so I've got control over the blade moving backwards and forwards. Now at this point you want to push down as hard as you possibly can and drag it towards you, trying to keep the blade in that same position which is what your knuckle is there for as a guide. So you just keep on pulling, pulling along and pulling along. Any bits that are slightly long, you just come along and ever so gently just slide the blade along and it should follow the skirting if you've got it in the right angle. There you go. I would always use a dolphin knife, which is perfectly shaped for, for actually cutting vinyl in. A normal Stanley blade, a uh, Stanley knife is too big and too chunky and it doesn't have the right angle. So I'd recommend always getting a dolphin knife, which the colour flooring do sell. In most cases, when it comes cutting up to the wall, I would leave sort of the thickness of a credit card gap just for any sort of expansion or anything like that. If you don't like the look of that, then you've always got the option of putting a mastic seal round to cover it, cover the gap up, either a clear or the same colour as the vinyl. And when fitting in a doorway, ideally remove the door. Alternatively, push the vinyl under the threshold. So this is the technique where you just gently push it underneath, so you folded it under, then basically just open your door up and just let it drag through, and then you can flap it, then you can flap it back down underneath. Step four, seams. If you're laying more than one piece, there's no need to weld this flooring. For the best results, we recommend the double cut seam technique demonstrated here. When you're doing your wall cuts, you obviously use a hook blade. On your joins, you have to use a concave blade. Now, I've discovered trying to use straight blades or concave blades, the problem with straight blades, it cuts it too tight and it ends up doing this to the actual joint, making it peak. So you have to use a concave blade. It's a lot nicer and a lot cleaner cut. So when it comes to doing your joint, you've overlapped it by between an inch to two inches overlap. Now, the vinyl underneath is obviously underneath and you can feel that with your thumb here. So this is where the actual vinyl underneath is laying. Now, I position the straight edge so I can feel the vinyl still underneath. Now, I'm just laying the straight edge roughly in line all the way down the join, so it's roughly about the same distance from my thumb to the straight edge for the length. Just all the way up so you can still see that I've still got the same gap there and I've still got roughly the same gap here. Once you've got that up the whole thing, you apply pressure to the straight edge using your concave blade you position it, now I score it to begin with, just run it gently along the straight edge and just do that several times, just keep going and then eventually you actually reach the floor. When you hear that sound, if you've got a latex floor, you should hear a nice scraping noise which means that you've hit the bottom of the actual floor itself. If you don't hear that noise, you've got to keep on doing it until you've scraped through. So I'm still cutting. And there's that scrape. Now once you've come to the end of your straight edge, obviously you need to move your straight edge. I try and leave the knife in here, just so I can slide the actual straight edge down. Just gently lifting the knife up, and then just trying to line it back up. Leave a slight little overhang of the actual straight edge. Line it back up, and then just do your thumb trick again. Make sure that you've got the same distance throughout. If there's any discrepancies, then just move it over slightly so it keeps it at the same distance apart. So again, to the eye, I feel like I'm in line. And again, just gently scoring. Keep on scoring. And now I should get the scrape. Every so often when you've got a long bit, I just tend to cut that off, just to make it easier for myself so I can see what I'm doing. And then repositioning my straight edge. Now I've got to stress, you must be on this side of the join so you can feel the vinyl underneath. If you cut it on this side, like that way, it normally leaves the join slightly gappy. 
So you can't feel the vinyl either, so you've got the danger that you might actually cut off the vinyl, so you're not cutting both pieces. So just make sure you're on this side and you can feel the vinyl is here. Once you've cut through the whole joint, so now this is the last bit, obviously lift up this side, you lift this up and then you pull out the piece that you've, you've cut, like so. You literally just pull that all the way up. Now if you've cut it all the way through, it'll come up easily. If it gets stuck, it means that you haven't cut it all the way through and you need to be very careful how you do that. You're gonna have to get back down on your hands and knees and just pull it back ever so gently and then just cut it very gently. Once you've got all of this up, dispose of that, then you can either use a roller, which I prefer to do, or just your thumb. Now I'll show you the thumb, because not everyone's gonna have a roller. Basically, I always start in the middle. Basically, all I'm doing is just pushing it slightly over in that angle, just to give it a bit of, to put it back in. Now, if you get a stubborn bit like this, what I tend to do is just use my knife just to push it down and give it a little tap and then just clean up the edge. Once you've got it in position, I always run my hand just along the back edge just to make sure that that's in the glue so you haven't got a little sort of bubble where it kicks up against the other vinyl. So just give it a little push just to make sure it's completely flat and it's still in the glue. And then where you started, just go the opposite way with the other thumb. So a lot of people worry about the joints. If you do it this way, you shouldn't have any issues. It should be a nice tight joint. Once, once you've laid your floor and the seam's done, you're complete. But you can walk in it straight away, but we recommend that you leave any furniture or any heavy goods out for at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm.